Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Jade, and the lovely Wendy. Wendy. Nice to see you again. Yeah, so for anyone that missed last week's video, we were talking about bulimia and the general facts about it. Today, we're going to be talking about body dysmorphia. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Not that glamorous. Dun, 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 dun. A Jada Bride. Question number one. What is body dysmorphia? So when you have body dysmorphia, you have this really skewed image of yourself, of yourself, and, and your you're body. constantly picking at these imperfections that you have created in your mind. Yes. So maybe you look in the mirror and you're like, Oh, my arms are gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> You just can't get your mind off of that one yeah. thing, or maybe there's multiple things. But your mind basically perseverates on these things that you don't like about yourself. And it's like a constant nightmare, really. Yeah, these false misconceptions can actually run your life to the point where you can't function. I mean, I personally, I've got real issues about my belly area, so... Most women have, you know, that little curve, that little bump, and that's the that's sign of being true. feminine. Yes. You've got to make a baby in that area one and I day. Hate that area. And I, I hate it. I hate it so much. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just like, I want to cut that bit off. off. <laughs> just cut that bit off. Flip it over there. Make a pizza from it. That would be disgusting to make a belly fat pizza. See, these conversations can be fun. Keep listening. Yeah, right. We promise it's not all depressing and dry. <laughs> no, but seriously, yeah. Like, I'm constantly thinking about it. Wherever I am, if I'm out in public, even if I'm, I'm at home, about I'm it right me now. too, me too. I'm always tensing. I'm always trying to hold it in. You too. I'm thinking of like even right rearranging now. Yes, dress, like trying so to it's not like showing. covering. Yes. Yet another thing we there have. There we go. Fun. Yeah. This is why we should talk about it. Literally. The first thing I do every single morning, I wake up, I go to pee, and then after I pee, I lift up my top oh and I look my at God. my belly in the mirror. It's so unhealthy, but that's the habit. Do that you I do it to. too? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I do, <sighs> even now. So I'm not bulimic even anymore, now. but I definitely still have body dysmorphia issues. No. Yes, basically. Next question. How's your body dysmorphia now? <laughs> I just answered that for you. It's pretty bad, but yeah. getting better, I want to say. Just because you can overcome one eating disorder, whether that be bulimia or something else. Anorexia or whatever. That's right. Doesn't mean that you're not going to be free of body dysmorphia. Yes. They're two separate things. How's your body dysmorphia now? I mean, it affects me daily. It's something that, like you said, you wake up and that's what you, that's what's on your mind. Yeah. Have I lost weight? Oh my god, do I look any different? Oh my god, I'm the same. Like a yeah. flat tummy this morning. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not something that I would ever look at someone else and think like, Whoa. Oh wow, look at their stomach. Like, never. Never. It's just me. Right, I like look at you and I think you're tiny. I, you so you're gonna love my belly. Curves in all the right places. Right. I'm like, why can't I have that? What are you talking about? Can you <laughs> have that? <laughs> Slap this guy. <laughs> <Just> slap you <laughs> back. <laughs> That's the reality of it and I don't know the statistics but I'm sure a lot of people suffer of this. It's, I'm gonna put the statistics on the screen for yes. you now. Okay, so around 0.5 to 0.7% of the UK have body dysmorphia, which is between 333,250 and 466,550 people. <gasps> and around 1.7 to 2.9% of the US have body dysmorphia, which again is approximately 5 to 10 million people, or 1 in 50. I feel guilty that that's on my mind rather than other things that I should care about. It's, it's just crazy. so much brain space. So mm -hmm. much unwanted airtime, and I'm like, why am I feeding this part of my brain? But you can't switch it off. No, no, it doesn't work like that. If you could, oh my god, I'd be free woman by now. <laughs> be like a <laughs> Dates are the worst. Yeah. We're like getting dressed. Getting dressed in getting the morning, dressed, yeah. not being satisfied. And I find myself pulling my knickers up so that they're really oh. high to try and flatten it. It's not even that big a bump. If I think about it, like, relatively, it's normal, oh. but still. I'm like high waisted everything. I'm so thankful that this is a trend because <laughs> yeah. it really helps me feel like I'm hiding. Oh my god, Beach. myself. How about beach? I'm thankful Summer for summer beaches. Oh my gosh, that sounds so horrible. But I'm Corona. Say it. I'm 
Oh my god. Thank god for coronavirus yeah. this year. Silver lining. Preventing to us from. <laughs> oh my god. But how sad are our and lives I, when we have to say these things? And I love the beach. I <laughs> feel too. like I was. I should have been born on a the beach. A mermaid. I love swimming. Exactly. Yeah. But I get there and I just feel like no I'm a big me, fat it? whale and everyone else is tiny and yeah. They're mm -hmm. staring, right? Mm -hmm. And they're judging me. Everyone's looking at all these parts of my body that I don't like. No one else cares. Yes. Everyone else is probably concerned with their own bodies, but right. like here we are. <laughs> like, don't look at me, I'm shy. It's like, why does that have to be the forefront <laughs> of, of a beach trip? Yeah, it just ruins the whole experience and stops us from having fun. <sighs> Next, when did you start feeling body dysmorphia? Ooh, I have no idea, you know? I can't pinpoint the moment I started feeling it. I guess maybe back at dance. At my old dance school, mm -hmm. we had lots of live shows, and mm -hmm. again, we were wearing these skin-tight costumes. Mm -hmm. I would hear all the other girls talking about their body parts and trying to squeeze them and keep them from showing. Mm -hmm. I guess a little bit must have brushed off onto me, and I started becoming aware of my body at mm -hmm. that point. Mm -hmm. But I can't tell when it turned into dysmorphia. I would have to say that's the same. You know, when you're going through all these changes and puberty hits in middle school or junior high school, you become super conscious. And I remember feeling that way at school and thinking like, oh, the boys are looking at me or like the girls are judging me for this, for not having boobs. Or Do whatever. Let's go. <laughs> I was super self-conscious Were you flat-chested? Yes. Oh, so cute. It took me a while to hit puberty. Oh. So I was super tiny and I, I was very aware of that, but yeah. I don't know when it became an actual. And I went to an all girls school, so like I didn't have to worry about getting male attention and stuff. But girls can be very judgy, so. Oh my god! But there were so many bitches. I got bullied for freaking everything. I got bullied because I was reading on the bus. I got oh. bullied because I had really, really long hair. No layers, just like down to my waist. I was like Morticia Adams or something. <laughs> <laughs> I got bullied because I was too happy. Pick a thing. Bully Pick something. For it. I got bullied because yeah. I had freckles. Bullied because I had braces. Bullied because I wore glasses. Bullied because just freaking anything. For being alive. Yeah. But even then, that didn't affect my body dysmorphia. That didn't give me anything. So. Me neither. I need to reflect more on this. It was probably after I developed bulimia, to be honest. I think it must have happened around the same time. I guess my body dysmorphia must have somehow triggered bulimia or, or vice versa because there's a lot of comorbid disorders that Come exist together. along with yeah bulimia <laughs> anxiety depression body dysmorphia yeah as if bulimia wasn't enough for you to deal with exactly was your image of yourself distorted because of behavior you inherited from someone else no that's a mm. Maybe a little bit from my mum, because my mum is very image conscious. Mm -hmm. And again, the dance school thing. Maybe from oh, from people's comments, I would say, but I don't think I inherited anything from other people that I can recall. Probably at university, my roommate suffered from some kind of eating disorder and shrunk in size within the first few months at university. I shared a room with her for the first year, and we were best friends after that, so... I'm sure that must have rubbed off on me somehow. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. I got, I got on the calorie counting game at that point. I had no idea what a calorie was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and people aren't trying to bring you down, down with them. No, not at all. And I mean, my friend thought that she was building herself up. I mean, you know, yes. you're getting your dream body and whatnot, but I'm in a wait. very, very unhealthy way. I'm sure can I? <laughs> it can't be helped. Very nice. <laughs> Next! Were you professionally diagnosed with body dysmorphia? Or were just the symptoms and experiences alone enough for you to know that you had it? I wasn't the professionally diagnosed. I wasn't either. You I mean, don't have to be. I mean, you can figure it out, right? It's not rocket science. Do I hate my body? Do I hate Do a I specific thing? Do over this? And is it on my mind all the time? Constantly? Does it actually affect my functioning, my... my my capacity to do stuff. Okay, if you ticked any of these boxes or the majority, then you probably have body 
empty dysmorphia. Yeah, you don't need to be professionally diagnosed. I think it's pretty, you can figure it out, right? Yeah. Okay, next. Oh, were you ever shamed or bullied? Well, I answered my question. Were you ever shamed or bullied? Yes, yes, I was. I was, okay. I don't know if I told you about this, but I was classified as someone in the tiny titty committee. Oh, so I had, so there horrible. was a lot of body shaming, and that was from a guy, some idiot in high school. It's a cute name, but it's horrible. It is a cute name. <laughs> <laughs> but the way it made me feel was like, wow, I'm not, I'm based on my breast Exactly. Guys. Exactly. I'm lesser of a woman because my body doesn't compare to this girl's body. It made me feel like absolute shit. And mm. yeah. Like if you could see me now. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> Double hair. <laughs> Better. Yeah, that's really interesting because I was trying to slim down among other things mm -hmm. by being bulimic But I was never bullied for well I'd say there were some comments like my mom would say something if I came back from university And she noticed that I put on weight yeah. she would say that not in a hurtful way, but I and would still perceive it as of course. such Right. And I'd be like, oh shit. Now I have to do something about it. Yeah. Um, it didn't start that way, but it's just something that has been in the back of my mind. Yeah. Floating around there. It's something that you carry with you, right, for the rest of your life, unfortunately. These harmful comments that, the, that, that are nothing. Yeah. But yet you give them power. That's the and thing. And you give them the power to then take over your mind and control your body, or rather make you want to control your body. I sometimes get comments from my mum like, Oh Jade, your nose is grown. And I'm like, well, <laughs> well, there's literally nothing I can do about that. Like, that's going to continue to grow alongside my ears until I'm dead. Did you know your ears and nose never stop growing? I didn't know your nose. Fun fact, yeah. Nose and ears. That's why old people have got massive... Well, I guess you, that makes sense. So it makes sense that my you nose is growing. Mom, mom, by the way, <laughs> your so nose is yours. Your nose is growing too. <laughs> it's like, we're growing together. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. That nose on the I love you too. <laughs> oh, man. So, were you ever shamed or bullied? Yes. And do you think this might have contributed to getting body dysmorphia? Again, for me, no. I'd say so. Like, Probably most of it has come with, from within, but there's definitely external factors that contribute to of course. the way you see yourself, including the way society expects, especially women, to look. Mm -hmm. That harsh reality of having to fit a certain model and hearing comments from stupid boys who you're like, I just want to be loved. <laughs> I just want to be popular. I don't want to be different. I don't want to stand out. Right. Don't put me in the tiny titty committee. <laughs> oh, really? That sucked. Yeah, I'd say that it kind of, it definitely contributed. So there you go, guys. There you have it. Those were all the questions that I received from everybody on body dysmorphia. If you have any more questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Please give us a like and subscribe for more. We're coming to you next time on All About Vomiting. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. Also, be sure to check out my website. I run a website and blog, A Journey for Wisdom, with my now husband. So Yay! please check it out. <laughs> and also, we have a podcast, Don't Tell My Grandma. You can find it on all podcasting platforms. So please check us out and let us know what you think. So, yeah! Thank you, guys. Show Wendy some love. Yeah, I need it. <laughs>